What's up, Blueberries? My name is Elton Hilt, and in today's episode of Learning Dust, we're going to be playing with the Amar Starter Fit. Now, as you see here, I've modified it from its original. I've included two enhanced shield extenders and a nano hive. Go in and take a look here. So, the, of all the starter fits, this is the one I least recommend that you run for a number of reasons, but one being that Amar are armor tankers, but the Militia Amar medium frame has no low slots, so you can't augment that at all. So, with one point, however, in medium frame, you get two extra low slots. So, this allows you to add an armor plate, to give an armor rep, to do any number of things to enhance your armor. So, this is actually how I would recommend you play. Get rid of the starter fits, get one point in the medium frame, and use the basic. So, um, if that's the route you're going to go, then definitely get some skill in armor. If not, if you really are going to go for the uh, just the, the basic militia frame, then you're going to need shields. And I would recommend getting your shields up to enhanced. With the recent buff to enhanced shielding, uh, it actually pays off to get it to enhanced now. So you can see here I've got one point in the medium to unlock that other suit. Very low skill point character again. Got core upgrades two, so I can get my nano circuitry three. And then shield extension three. I don't have any points in weaponry here, but uh, with 500,000 skill points, you can't unlock that. Um, so, I'm going to start with this frame, but to after my first death, I'm going to switch back and just kind of show you. Um, how disadvantaged you are without those two low slots. So we'll be running the Scrambler Rifle. We'll talk a little bit about that. The Scrambler Rifle is a great weapon if you're accurate. Um, it has very high damage per shot, slightly lower um, damage or slightly lower uh, rate of fire, and you can charge up a shot and hold that charge and deal increased damage with one shot. But it does require that you be very accurate. And if you're not, then you're going to struggle with the uh, um, Scrambler Rifle. The other component you really have to watch for is your overheat. So every shot you'll build up heat. And if your heat reaches critical status, the weapon will seize. You'll be unable to shoot, to run, to climb, to get in, in a vehicle. Um, and that's something that you're going to want to... So this. Also, when you're holding a charge, there's going to be a little glow around you. Yeah, I totally should have seen that one coming. The guy was acting funny. Should have known there was going to be somebody there flanking me. And I didn't have a lot of cover at all. So definitely not the best way to approach that situation. But let me come in in the frontline suit. Which is, remember, this is the militia starter frame without armor enhancing mods. See if we can do any better. So I, I definitely like the aiming rec reticle. Uh, it still performs fairly well if you hip fire it. So definitely kind of want to know your ranges here. I tend to aim with most weapons, even when I probably shouldn't. The one thing that I really like about this is the range. So the scramble rifle has a great range, only outclassed by the rail rifle. So you see there, I did a little bit of a charge shot and finished it up. You're going to have to, to really carefully manage your heat. And if you notice down in the lower right-hand corner where your ammo counter is, there's a little uh, sectioned uh, bar. And as you watch as I fire here, that bar fills up with red. And then when you reach all the way to the top, it overheats. So I'm going to overheat once, during, once or twice during this match and give you an idea of how damaging it can be to you. But if, if you like the Scrambler Rifle, it's definitely worth getting points into the Amar Assault, which has a bonus to heat reduction buildup. But even the base Scrambler Rifle is a really good one to run with. You'll just need to be accurate. You'll need to watch your shots, not um, waste shots. If you can't hit it, don't shoot it, because um, in addition to not 
in addition to expending ammo, you're also building up heat. And so you won't have as many shots when you really need it. The other nice thing about the Scrambler rifle is because it has such a high damage per shot, you'll find that you use less ammo. Um, the only reason I'm running a compact nano hive with this suit is for its reps. So the compact is the very first um, nano hive that does have armor repair capabilities. Unfortunately, due to the nerf to very low end nano hives, it's going to run out at the snap of a finger. Literally, if you have to um, repair it all, you'll get one, two, maybe three repairs out of it before it's gone. And you only have one of them. So, so it is kind of a last ditch effort um, there. When you get nano circuitry 4, you'll be able to unlock a better version, but um, it requires quite a bit of fitting to make it work. So let's talk about the militia medium frame for a bit. Uh, Amara are primarily armor tankers. They do have the capability of dual tanking, and they have great fitting, so they have a lot of CPU and power grid for their class. But the downside of this militia medium frame is that even though the base and the bulk of your hit points are in armor, you have no way to enhance that, no way to repair it. So you're really at a disadvantage, and it forces you to go with shields. So you notice that's exactly what I've done. I got enhanced shields, which gives me 50 hit points per enhanced, and I can fit that on the me medium frame without any f extra fitting skills. So that, that brings my total hit points up to about 480 or so, 470, which is a fairly respectable amount. Um, but now I have to play a little bit more like a shield tanker, so I'm relying on cover a lot, I hit and run, I can't to stand and take it as much as, say, an armor tanker could. And once I get into a firefight and that armor is damaged, I have no way to repair that with, short of dropping my one compact hive and then also finding a supply depot or hoping that somebody's there to repair me. If you get that one point in the basic frame and you run that instead of the starter fit, you'll be able to have an armor repair or enhance your armor with you know up to 160 or more hit points and that's pretty significant so you can definitely make this work but you're kind of a one shot if, if you know cannon if somebody if you get into a firefight and you survive odds are you're gonna rely uh, on your armor and but then you won't be able to repair that or regenerate that for the next time around so this, this issue is less now than it was four weeks ago. I first uh, recorded this uh, about four weeks ago, and, and it was even worse, because at the time, um, the only shield extenders worth getting were the complex, and uh, that's well out of reach of a new player. So with the buff to shields, especially the enhanced shields, giving you 50 hit points um, per extender, that's very significant. That's really... Um, given this particular suit uh, a leg up. I think before, with two basic shield extenders, you, you know, that was 44 points. So that's less than one shield extender now. And if you got enhanced, you still only had 66. So uh, definitely the buff to en enhanced shield extenders work. So if you go this route, you're going to need to put points into shields. But then as soon as you get a point or two and you get you start using your basic or your advanced um, suits, then you're going to have to switch back over to armor. So it it'll take a little bit longer to get those skills up. So you can kind of mitigate that by going with um, the basic suit and getting your armor and then working on your shields if you want that extra buffer, which is definitely worth it. So some other points to consider when you're when you're running this particular um, fit is um, definitely close range. Try to make. So you see here that um, I haven't modified the sidearm. Now the scrambler pistol is a great sidearm, but I wouldn't recommend it in combination with the scrambler rifle, uh, especially the basic variant, unless you're great at headshots. Now if you've got the accuracy to run the scrambler rifle, it probably means you have the accuracy to run the scrambler pistol. Um, but I would recommend putting a submachine gun in your sidearm slot uh, 
to give you some armor uh, damaging capabilities. So the uh, scrambler rifle does 20% bonus to shields, 20% reduction to armor. So when you're going up against somebody who's heavily armor tanked with the scrambler rifle, you're going to be at a disadvantage even though you're doing a great deal of damage per shot. Um, so being able to switch to something like the SMG or the MagSec SMG, will, which does 10% bonus to armor, is going to mitigate that. Now it's not as much damage per shot, but you're, you have a higher rate of fire. So if you noticed, that's exactly how I fit the basic suit out, is I had the scrambler rifle and I had the SMG. It's a great combo. If you can control the recoil of the MagSec, that'll give you some more range. If you're relying on the SMG primarily as a close quarters, they got too close, I don't want to overheat, then uh, the SMG is going to be a good fit. Now as you play this more, as you play the scrambler rifle more, you'll find that you'll get a feel for how many shots you can take before you need to switch it out. And that's an important skill to master. As you're getting into firefights, you're going to unconsciously want to kind of count how many shots you fired or how long it's taken you. you in the firefight, you're not going to be able to concentrate on the, sh you know, the target and your heat build up in the lower right hand corner. Your eyes just simply cannot, it's physiologically impossible to, to pay attention to both. Um, so your awareness kind of has to be uh, built in. It has to be unconscious, subconscious, whatever you want to call it. And that will come as you play this particular weapon a lot more. So, you know, this is going back a bit, but uh, you, you'll notice at the very start that um, the militia fit, the modified militia fit, cost me about 6,000 SP, or, or not SP, excuse me, ISK, but the basic variant um, cost me about 10. Now, I didn't have an equipment fit. That was for fitting reasons. I probably should have downgraded uh, one or two of the shields to get either the equipment or the uh, grenade. I can't remember which I was I was leaving out. But at the same time, uh, that buffer from the enhanced shields is significant enough that I felt that um, not having a grenade, especially a militia quality grenade, where I only have one anyway, um, isn't that big of a loss for me. Now this guy is running scrambler rifle as well, so I really got to watch out since a good portion of my so you notice here, I'm in a precarious situation. My shields, I'm not a sh natively, even though I have shield tanking capabilities with the slot layout, the, now I'm going to try to give this guy, oh, let's see, I should have saved that for me because I needed that armor, but I was hoping to support that particular heavy. So even worse situation now, three armor, 235 shields, I'm kind of stuck and I'm going to die here and that's, for the reason I stated before, I, I, you know, once your armor gets damaged, that compact nano hive is the only thing you have to repair, and it won't get you up all the way. Um, and since half, over half of your HP is in armor, that, that's uh, going to be an issue. Now, some other points to consider with this particular combination is you'll. I recognize that scouts, um, you don't have the scan precision to, to get the scouts. Just like all of the basic suits, without um, heavily investing in those skills and running enhancers, um, scouts are going to be a challenge, especially cloaked scouts. So uh, maintaining situational awareness is pretty key, and I hope you've noticed that over the last couple videos, that I'm constantly turning around, constantly checking my six, uh, even when I'm running solo, most significantly when I'm running solo, like I have been. Um, I have a team, but I'm not running with them, which means I have to check. I'm taking risks when I'm hacking and doing other things, but as soon as I'm done, I'm checking around, I'm looking, I'm trying to, to watch my corners. It's uh, one of the things you learn pretty early on in an uh, in army infantry career is that you always check the corners when clearing a room. So. There are times where I recognize that I fail in that regard, like there's a corner there I didn't clear, but 
you, at some point you have to, when you're running solo, you have to kind of um, rely a little bit on the tack net, rely a little bit on the fact that, you know, there isn't anybody around. Checking every corner um, on one hand may expose you to somebody coming around from the six. So, but for the most part, I try to check those corners. I try to look around before I commit. I try to take corners really wide. I don't really want to get into a close quarters fight because the scrambler rifle with its low rate of fire um, isn't nearly as good as some of the other assault rifles in the close quarters avenue. One of the nice things I've also noticed about both the scrambler pistol and the scrambler rifle is um, the auto aim, whatever you want to call it. With the other uh, rifles especially, I don't really notice it when trying to take or help me track a target but for whatever reason I've I notice it more with the scrambler rifle where you're trying to line up a shot and then auto aim kind of takes over and, and pulls you in the direction that, that your target is moving I don't know if that's intentional um, for the scramble pistol I, I know it is um, it has a, a bit more auto aim built in than many of the other sidearms but uh, for the scrambler rifle it, it just seems a little odd that it uh, would react more favorably to and uh, to auto aim so once again i didn't want to shoot there because i only have so many shots so i'm, I'm really trying to make sure that i line up those shots before i pull the, the trigger one of the challenges for me uh, i tend to run a well these days it's a plasma cannon but um when i'm running an assault rifle variant. I'm typically running the combat rifle and the, the combat rifle has a low damage per shot and so I tend to run through ammunition quite a bit. I need almost a full clip for many targets and so almost after every firefight I'll reload and you'll see that when I run the, the when the Mimitar starter fit comes out as I'm constantly reloading I want to have a full clip but with the scrambler rifle you don't. You don't need to reload after every firefight since most fights are over in less than 10 shots the advantage to you is that you know you can fire and and not have to take the time to reload so there 17 shots left um i could reload but i don't necessarily have to and seven shots so i missed one or two there but was able to take out that that target with just a few shots so 10 shots left it's one firefight, so I'll reload. So my challenge is not reloading all the time. I'm constantly fighting that urge when I'm running the scrambler rifle. So this is a situation where that SMG would have become, come in really handy right here. I was able to get a shot off, but what I could have done is had the SMG started pre-firing before I grounded that corner and probably stood a good chance of taking him out. So I hope this has been insightful for all of you Amar players out there just getting started. Uh, once again, I highly recommend that you not play with the starter fit, that you get one point in your basic frame so that you can get those two extra shots down or slots in the lows and it'll really help you out. As always, my name is Alton Hilt and I will see you all in the sandbox.